Welcome to Click Connect. I'm your host, Craig Sullivan. And today, we have a first-time guest, an industry leader, a friend. You know her, but we're not going to tell you who she is yet because we have to thank our production partners right now, our good friends over at Red Roof Franchising and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group, California. Without them, without you, without our guests, Danny and I don't have a show. So I'd like to thank our good friends again over at Red Roof Franchising and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group, California. If you're looking for a new brand, you want to get your real estate deals closed on time, call both these groups. They can help you. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. They'd love to hear from you. And with that now done, I would like to welcome for the first time, and hopefully not the last time. So producer, Dr. Suzanne Bagnera, you know her from No Vacancy Live with Glenn and Anthony. She is also uh, over at the hotel school at Indian River State College in Florida. She has a leadership academy uh, that she's also part of, and she's just an all-around wonderful person. Suzanne, welcome to the show. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your kind words. Oh, you're just wonderful. Especially, I know what it's like to work with Glenn. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Glenn. <laughs> Actually, my business partner last night said he's rubbing off on you in a negative way. You're not as prepared as you used to be. Like, I'm taking a page out of Glenn's playbook. I can just do this without being prepared sometimes. <laughs> That's funny. And we, uh, that, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. That's funny. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want any phone calls, at least not yet. I'd rather get deeper into the show. So. <laughs> I'm sure there's good stories. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Suzanne, for the few people that may not know you, would you please give them a short bio and tell them about the college and your hospitality leadership academy, please? Fantastic. So I am down at Indian River State College, and we are located in the Treasure Coast of Florida. And so that would go from Vero Beach to our main mm. campus in Fort Pierce, Stewart, and Port St. Lucie in Okeechobee. Uh, we have four counties that we serve, and um, we have a culinary and hospitality and tourism management department where we have an associate's degree in culinary management, and we have an associate's in hospitality and tourism management. That's where I'm positioned, where I am the director of the Hospitality Institute and teach classes. And one of the other pieces that I am working on is creating the Anthony Melchiori Institute of Hospitality. So that keeps me on my toes. I get to produce the podcast during the day from my office here in Vero Beach, which is lots of fun. And then um, my night job, if you will, is I have a business, which is the Hospitality Leadership Academy. I've got two amazing business partners, Alec Dalton and Danielle Clark Cole. And we work on doing customer service training for businesses. Doesn't have to be hospitality but we try and help other businesses ramp up their customer service experiences, something that is vastly needed in our industry today. Absolutely. I, you know, let's talk leadership. Okay. You mm -hmm. know, um, you are helping with the leaders of tomorrow at the college. So let's delve into that a little bit. And then let's also Let's get into this Hospitality Leadership Academy and how you're helping people with their customer service as well. I think those are both critical needs right now. Listen, I would say from a, you know, there is a difference between a four-year institution and a state or a community college. We have associate degrees. And so um, I am so thrilled to be down here with such an amazing team of people with a college president, Dr. Tim Moore, who is simply outstanding. Uh, we have, through our foundation, actually looked at offering the Promise Program. We are, for our four district counties, for students that graduate this month from their high school in our service district providing free college tuition for an associate's or an AA degree. Amazing opportunity. Yeah. 
And my division is the workforce education division. So not only am I with culinary hospitality, but I'm also with HVAC, I'm with automotive, welding, all of the programs that are the technical programs that the pipeline is just something that we so badly need for all of our industries, not just culinary and hospitality. And we get f folks into the workforce. So from that end, it's truly an awesome opportunity to be able to try and drive that pipeline and get people here and think creatively. I would say the largest challenge I've come across has been simply the fact that not a lot of high school students, much less their parents, realize what is hospitality. And yeah. so that has really been my newer mission, if you will, is just trying to get on my soapbox of what is hospitality and explain it and get people to just realize that it's not just culinary. There's so much more to our industry. You're, you're right about that. And I think producer Danny just rolled her eyes because I'm always talking about, you know, we, we've got to do a better job at recruiting. So See, Danny, I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, it honestly, and it's it's when we're starting to see a pivot. When I got here, um, down here in Florida in in June, and I started meeting with some industry folks, everybody come, came at me and said, "We need your students. I need them to work. How many yeah. students do you have?" And I'd be like, "That's great. I'm happy to share my students when they graduate." but I need students first. <laughs> and so we yeah. certainly like, and we are not the only school and we are much better positioned than other schools. Our enrollment is down as in most schools are, but we're far less down than other institutions. And so we're looking at different strategies. And so obviously a, a sense of COVID is going to create that impact and not as many people were interested in schools. And so what can we do to revitalize that? And now I've got industry folks that are thinking about what is the long-term partnership? This is not a relationship that just happens overnight. It doesn't, it's not gonna drive my students to you immediately just because you have an opening. I would say probably about 90 to 95% of my students actually already are currently employed. And in most instances in the field, which is great, yeah. but it's not gonna help create new opportunities. So I, I've been looking at it from the standpoint of, well, what employees do you have? Because we talk about retention. We want to keep the current employees that you have. You don't want to lose them. Well, guess what? Send them to me. And as um, I think Peter Ritchie just said in an email, he wants my students in his program at FAU, he wants them to be Susanified. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I, loved it. It. I was like, this is so awesome. But, um, you know, getting some of that additional skill set that individuals can use in, in terms of being transferable and, and using it to advance their career. Yeah. And so when we start to shift the mindset, it's not just about getting the graduates. It's what is that relationship? Can you come in and be a guest speaker in a class? Can you assist with the development of a project or engage with the students in a project? Can you host a field trip and let me have my students come tour your facility? Will you come to a career fair? There are so many ways that we can create partnerships that now when my students are looking, they're like, ooh, I didn't think about that country club that we just took a tour in. And that was a really go. great example. We had a country club. We did a tour. I had a student who needed only one credit of an internship in order to graduate. And she's like, you know, I'm really interested in that Orchid Island Country Club. Within 12 hours from the tour to completing paperwork, she had an internship and everything signed out. And she never would have thought about that facility had she not had that experience in that tour. So it's those small things that go a long way that's going to create a relationship. Absolutely. And, and, and as you well know, it's always about the relationships. It's bringing in that not quite centered opportunity that crosses, you know, a lot of different disciplines, not just hospitality. I mean, whether it's a country club, a hotel, a resort, a restaurant, a QSR, you know, any number of things. And, and that's great. How about your leadership academy? Tell us a little bit more about that. How is that crossing with the college? Because there's got to be some blending from both. I mean, it sounds to me like just a little bit I know that there's an opportunity to, for people to expand their careers and their opportunities via both programs. 
And so there's kind of almost two leadership academies, if you will. So there's my side business, which is the Hospitality Leadership Academy. Um, and that manifested itself um, because of the textbook that I wrote with two researchers, my um, former vice president or actually assistant dean of academic affairs, Peter Sunday, and uh, my now business partner, Danielle Clark Cole. And we wrote human resource cases in hospitality great book, 75 Little Vignettes. Well, in posting that out on LinkedIn, we leveraged social media. We had an individual reach out and say, you know, I would love for you to come in and train my staff using your book in some of the cases. And so Danielle and I were all excited because we were in Boston. We we're like, great, we can do this. And we met with the client. We're like, you know, there's a lot more quality and service in here. And um, at the time, we were just kind of starting to eventually go into the COVID scenario, but we're like, we need someone with service. And another graduate that she had known prior to me being there was Alec Dalton. And we're like, so do you want to do a little something on the side with us? And that just manifested into creating training programs. And so we've now signed an awesome deal with America's Car Mart. We're doing some of their training. We're working with um, another company that's out in the Caribbean. And we've got a bunch of other proposals that are out there. So um, when we're done here, I've got to flip my hat and do another job really quickly. <laughs> and then at the college, we have the Anthony Melchiori Institute of Hospitality. Yeah. And here, what I'm working on crafting is going to be certification courses that will be available for people that are in this industry, people that are looking to get into the industry in terms of those career changers, or those that are really here and looking to level up or advance their skills. So um, that is going to be really exciting because my institution is an accredited institution through the SACS for accreditation. So it okay. lends some credence to the fact that I'm not just a third party opportunity to create certifications. I've got it tied to an educational institute. So. Perfect. Now, with that accreditation, is that strictly on the operations side or is that also on acquisitions and development and repositioning? Do you handle the real estate side of it as well? So there is a module or a certification that we're looking at in terms of the, the real estate development deal. Um, yeah. I think our first one out of the gate is going to be human resource focused because I yeah. feel as though that's the most critical aspect that so many need guidance on. And there's just so much content that's um, being put together for that. But yes. And so yeah. this is another opportunity where we'll be able to leverage some partnerships with our industry professionals who have known it and diehards and, and true experts and icons to our industry yeah. to be able to be incorporated into the program in a variety of ways. But I'm trying to craft it so that it's friendly for our industry employees that are currently working. But the great thing about this is that it's going to include engagement experiences in a virtual manner with Anthony Malcuri. What better right. way to ask a question directly of someone who is so well known in our industry. So I'm really excited. And that's great. You know, and yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, let's start off with human resources. Let's, let's get that module done. Um, all I know is when I worked for a publicly held corporation, they were always telling me that I needed help. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I think that that's wonderful. And, and you know, you're, you're broadening the base and it's not just the operation side. And, and trust me, I, I know that side is, is critically important. I, I'm on the deal side. You know, I, I wasn't an ops guy. I was an asset manager, an acquisition, refinance, reposition person. Uh, how do you how do you come across with culture uh, in both you know at the college and your academy because we've got a dynamic culture change going on right now we've got people that don't feel that they necessarily have to work in the office all the time um, some of them have moved to other locations and are commuting in for a week or 10 days uh, you know, to, the, to the, the corporate office. And some people don't want to you know, work on site on the property all the time. So uh, how, how are you meshing all of that with these dynamic changes in 
company culture that's going on right now? Phenomenal question, because I don't think there's any right answer. I think we're still, right. you know, we're trying to take the training wheels off of our bikes as we're trying to go forward, right? Because we've advanced so far so quickly on some levels coming out of a pandemic where we hadn't been before. And work remote opportunities, work from home, work from anywhere, really was not even truly in its total form. It was like infancy before the right. pandemic. And so now um, we've we've started to get a little bit of a taste and a flavor to what that is. And so my students, I typically am telling them, you know, on some level, in order for you to be any level of success, you've got to dip your hands into it. You've got to dip your toes in the sand because you're only going to advance yourself with the experience that you have. And that's hard to do when you're not there and you're not in person. To that end, you've got to find the right culture, right? Yep. So you've got to find the right mix of a company. There may be a company that you're real interested in, but maybe when you're in the interview process or when you're getting there, you're like, mm, you know what? This doesn't quite drive for me. It doesn't mean there's not a company for you. You've just got to find what you're comfortable with. And to that end, you've got to figure out what is the position that you're interested in. Housekeeping, for example. While we may be able to incorporate technology to assist us in cleaning rooms, right. we're, you're still going to need someone in that room to clean it. So we'll never be able to in, evaporate that position in-house entirely. But what can we do? How can be, we be more creative? How can we be more clever? Are we able to do um, a scheduling change? Are we able to be more flexible with our scheduling? Can we do four days a week instead of five days a week? Yeah. Um, the other piece that I'm also coming across with, and and I get it. I totally, co totally get it. We're all hammered with not having enough staff to be able to operate and putting overtime right. onto people. And so I think it goes back to some of those training basics and not overburdening your team. And how can you make it so that they're not working excessive amounts of hours? I have a individual who's looking to come take classes here and is trying to find a new job because in peak season, and, and we've almost been in peak season in Florida for two <laughs> years down here. Um, <laughs> these guys have, they're working 60 to 80 hours a week. And, yeah. you know, when you think about this, right, you've got employers who are complaining that they don't have enough people to work, that they want to give employees an opportunity to advance themselves or take classes. But then you're constantly calling the student, your employee, oh, I need you to come in and cover a shift because so-and-so called out. It's like you're not respecting the boundary to I need that time to be able to go to my class or to prepare to study. And so it's kind of hard because you can't have it both ways. You, you've you got to support that. And I know when I was a GM in hotels, that was a piece. If I had somebody that was a student, I totally supported what that was. And I knew in my book of scheduling components before I looked, I didn't just call. Was there a reason why they weren't there? I checked what was my PTO forms before I just picked up the phone or texted to make sure that I was embracing their time off. I'm all about work hard and play hard. <laughs> so having oh, yeah. your two days off, you know, hopefully together is, is an important piece. I agree. And, you know, it's, we make a lot of sacrifices for the traveling public. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we give up a lot of holidays and other things. And I, I've been a proponent and brought it up on the show a few times that, you know, is part of your programming. It's not just about money. It is the culture. It is the opportunity for advancement. But you've also got to give back a little bit more. It's like, you know, how about a couple of extra, you know, PTO days for somebody who works on Christmas or Christmas Eve and you know, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and 4th of July and, and all these other things. And I'm also one that my personal opinion is that healthcare is a right. It shouldn't be tied to employment. I've gone through those periods where I had to pay for conversion policies and, you know, the, the cost was exorbitant. And um, I'm one of many now at this point that uh, the American Care Act I've always liked. I, it, it lowered my my premiums uh, being self-employed. But, you know, I think there's a better use of that money corporately. I think that, you know, because as an employer, you're paying for your associate uh, or half of it mm -hmm. in, in most cases. 
um, and the employees paying for the other half plus their family members. Mm -hmm. So let's take that money and put it into bonuses. Let's put it into education. Let's put it into a higher base salary, those type of things. And yeah, but that's just my opinion. So. Well, I mean, even think about um, hotels, for example, right? One of the things yeah. we have to have is a reserve for capital improvements yep. or renovations, right? We have a 4% reserve typically on average. So yeah. why wouldn't we create more of that professional development pool? Same goes for, look, many times when we have some type of financial type of crisis, what are the two areas that we cut most in? Sales and training. And so, right. you know, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face by not having a salesperson for future business and the people you do have, you're not training them so that they can be successful. And, yeah. you know, when you've got the people that are there, you need to onboard them and then continue to give them opportunities to advance. So I found at Indian River State College, we have a way, you know, I kept using the phrase um, tuition reimbursement. Yeah. And here we have to pay tuition before you start the semester. So most of our students, it's a, it's a state school, they don't have the money, um, even though it's only $311.49 for a credit, super, super affordable. Wow, yeah. Um, I mean, really, it's another reason why I came down here. If you're trying to get an education, it's, you know, a no brainer and, and you've got great no. faculty like me teaching. Um, there you go. But, to that end, when when you start looking at different ways, create a scholarship. And so it can be tuition reimbursement, but then you can also look at what are the tax advantages that you can get by creating a scholarship. And then you dictate terms. Um, I've got employers that can now dictate some of those terms for students coming and enrolling in my program. So yeah. you know, that's my next recruitment push, if you will, because I recruit on so many different levels. And that's how I'm going to try and continue to connect with the industry. Give me that opportunity to help me educate, train, and give them professional development opportunities in our field. Yeah. Not just go to college and go for nursing or for something else. Right. Keep right. them within, within the scope of the industry. Give them more benefits that way than if they just get a college degree. Well, and, and again, it, it plays into what you were saying earlier. It's 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 about the promotion opportunity. I mean, you know, you shouldn't have to wait five years for a promotion. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, I you know this helps out and accelerates your path. And you know, I've I've probably said this, and Danny's probably got a, 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 a count on it somewhere. But you know, you're best leaders in the industry are the ones that started out as hourly associates. Mm -hmm. Your friend and mine, Chris Green is one of them. Yep. Tom Gachet over at Davidson Hotels, good friend, is another one. And they remember those days. They help those associates. You know, they help all their associates, but you know, they've got, you know, a little bit more empathy yeah, you know, because they've been through everything. So I started I as a dessert girl in our family restaurant. Did you really? Wow. Yeah. I was wow. in the back <laughs> slicing, slicing pies, cakes, and scooping ice cream. And we were the only restaurant in town that had a soft serve ice cream machine. So I am <laughs> wicked <laughs> awesome at making parfaits. That's funny. Well, I was scrubbing pots and pans in a cafeteria. So <laughs> <laughs> But oh, to, that, to that point, really, truly, you you yeah. are more aware and more cognizant. You yeah. don't take for granted those opportunities. And I would always, and this was always something important to me, it was instilled uh, with Bristol Hotels and Resorts. We yeah. did a PDP, a personal development plan. So we know that you're not going to necessarily want to stay in this position. We want to help get you to that next position. Right. What is that next position? What are the skills that that position entails? And what do you lack? And what are we going to do to get you there and have a plan and support that growth and that experience as opposed it. to just, all right, so be promoted. Because how many times do we promote somebody or even nowadays, right? I know Anthony has said it many times on our show. Um, we're advancing someone to step into the AGM role or from an AGM to a GM role. And they don't have the tools to be successful in, in doing that next yeah. advance up in that job. We just take for granted that they have it. So we, we have to do better as an overall industry. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more with you. Now, you touched on it a little bit earlier. Enrollment, that's down. Is that dramatic? Is it a little somewhere in between? 
Is it everybody, you know, trying to be an entrepreneur, you know, getting back to work, all of the above? How, how has that affected you? Honestly, of all of the, the above. So one of the um, components that came out from some research is that, believe it or not, the four-year institutions, which we didn't anticipate, but the four-year institutions actually did better than some of the community colleges and the state colleges. But you also have to take a look at your audience to that component. So um, folks who had been involved in the pandemic wanted to get away from their home. And so when colleges started to resume and you have an on-campus living experience, you could now be on campus and living and not at your home and being able to socialize more. Another aspect from the community college standpoint, we have a lot of our students currently employed and working. Um, and so they might not have either had the hours or the money to be able to continue their education. So we roughly at Indian River State College saw about a 6% decrease in our experience for enrollment drop. And I think that was less. I believe the average is about 10% for most community colleges. So we were doing better and we're still trying to, to do better. But certainly one of the things that myself and our chair, Deb Medkiff, does here, we really have been trying to work hard. I think when we looked at things collectively, she and I over this last year have hit well over 80 recruiting related events to be able to expose our brand of the college and our individual department and let people know what we have and what we can offer in terms of education for folks. So it's not a short-term fix. It's right. a long-term component, especially when I'm getting into these high schools. You know, most of the seniors have made their decision. Yeah. You're not going to get that many, but I'm trying to seed the the pipeline um, for our juniors, our sophomore, our freshmen, and exactly. the next wave is even into those middle schools. Uh, somebody had just even recently said that they had hosted in one of their hotels preschoolers to come to the hotel for a field trip. And I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you're really starting them young. But That's you know, young, yeah, that's young. Plant little seeds of travel, right? right? We're trying to increase travel, so... Look, you know, this is what a hotel is like. There's yeah. so many opportunities that you can leverage and do. You just have to really think out of the box and not the traditional way of what we've always done. Because if we do what we've always done, we're going to just not get different. We're going to cease to exist. We are. We, we've yeah. got to be creative and out of the box. Yeah, absolutely. How about scholarships? Tell us about your scholarship programs. So um, our Indian River State College Foundation has um, received a very significant donation in, I believe it was in 2020, um, and that was from uh, Jeff Bezos' former wife, Mackenzie. There is a foundation that she has set up, and we received uh, one of the top-rated donations of $45 million dollars. And so we have leveraged that in a variety of ways because it's for education for those that are relatively disadvantaged. And so we are going to be doubling the nursing program. Clearly, we need more nurses. That's one area. So they've been very specific in the growth in which the college has been growing from that end. We've created the Indian River Promise Program. And as I mentioned before, this is going to provide free tuition. It's tuition only. It's not fees and it's not textbooks. But for students that want to earn an associate's degree or an AA degree, and if they've graduated from our four service districts in this month of May 2022, we are then from that vantage point looking at are there additional philanthropic donors that would like to tie their name to be the donor of that program moving forward. We're doing it as a pilot program this year, but our intention is to be able to offer that annually and then even go potentially, hopefully, beyond that scope, right? You've seen another increase in homeschool happening or virtual homeschool happening. So what can we do to try and tap into that market through this type of promise opportunity for folks? We also have a lot of folks that create donations to our institution. Some are very general. Some are very, very specific with what they're looking for. Um, we are lucky down at this location. It's only $15,000 to do an endowed scholarship as an opportunity. And then the residuals right. each year um, can go towards scholarships. So there is a tremendous amount of opportunity for our students when they enroll to be able to apply to find additional dollars. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. 
Dr. Producer Suzanne, are you ready for our lightning round? I think I'm ready. Bring it on. Okay. Word association. First thing that pops into your head, Producer Danny's going to put two minutes on the clock. And we are starting now. Labor. Force. Team. Work. Students. Education. Anthony. <laughs> My friend. Course prep. Draining. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite airport. Um, Logan. Glenn. Grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> tequila or whiskey? Ooh, neither, but I guess tequila. All right. Favorite hotel or resort? Um, I like the Cliff House up in Maine. Producer David. Oh, do I have to admit that one? Um, okay, he smiles. There you go. You <laughs> did that with a minute seven left. And just so that everybody knows, I warned Suzanne before we started filming that she was playing for a guest pass to click six next year, and she won one. So Yay! congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, what message do you want to get out to the public about hospitality? I would say my message comes from a twofold standpoint, and it's going to be to consumers that are trying to find opportunities. So um, parents and students, when you're looking for careers, start to understand what hospitality is. It's not just hotels and restaurants. Think cruise ships, think airplanes, travel, casinos, theme parks. There can be marketing positions, legal positions. There are so many. I kind of think about it as it's business, but better. And we do it with this spirit and this passion. Mine is the symbol of hospitality. You see the pineapples behind me. And so I exude that into what we look at trying to do. Understand that because there are so many job opportunities. And then from the other side is going to be my plea for hospitality executives currently working. Think out of the box. It's not going to always be what you've always done. You've got to be clever. You've got to be creative. You've got to listen to your employees. You've got to be flexible and you've got to be adaptable. My concern is for the franchisees and for individual independent operators that you embrace the employees that we have working in our industry and you not abuse those employees. Those few that bring it down, start to bring it down for our entire industry. And, and that's what I don't want to see happen. We have so much greatness that's happening within our industry and we need to collectively collaborate before we compete to bring ourselves up and bring the importance of our industry back to light. And we can do this. We just got to work together in order to be able to accomplish it. You're right. Very well said. And, you know, we're coming off of more than two years of cooperating with one another and putting the competition to the side. And this has got to be one thing that we absolutely have to cooperate on is our it's our future. It, it's the future of travel. I mean, hotels, travel and tourism are a huge economic engine, not just for California, but the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Florida, for example, is another Number state. One. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. In many yeah. states, it's the first, second, or third largest industry in the state. So yeah. to not embrace it is it, it just boggles my mind. <laughs> well, that and I don't think a lot of people understand the amount of taxes that we pay. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just real estate tax and sales tax. A lot of times it's the transit occupancy tax. And, you know, for a fact, we pay so much in tax that generally keeps the residential tax bill down a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. It goes for fire and EMTs and trash and various other things. That TOT tax stays in your city. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So it's very important. Does it help you? Build a new football stadium and why you're building a football stadium for a billionaire, I will never understand. Uh, but, you know, 
there's a lot of uses that just go into the community with that TOT tax. Suzanne, last question. Okay. How much fun are you having on No Vacancy Live? I honestly, I was a guest. I saw yeah. Glenn making mistakes. I sent him a message and said, you're making a mistake. <laughs> You've done something wrong. And he's like, oh, Dave left. And now it's, you know, crazy. And I was like, well, I could help you. And my, I could help you turn from one to two days a week to doing it four days and communicating with text messages all the time. And yeah. honestly, Glenn, Anthony, and even David, as much as I like to poke fun at him because it, it can be so easy. The three of them have honestly been such a yeah. true godsend in being a family blessing. And even yeah. in the way in which they've connected me to you in, yeah. in Friday Night Audit, um, they have helped me through the darkest days in times um, in in my move here with some of my family challenges where they were surprised that I would show up and, and Glenn, even now, how do you have the ability to smile um, and be able to get through what, come on, Glenn, just let's go. We got to do what we got to do. Um, so I probably drive him crazy with my annoying spirit of hospitality and enthusiasm, but not at all. I know he loves it. You know, I've, I've known him for over 20 years and you know, he, he, he is a wonderful human, but don't ask me to repeat that because I won't. Well, uh, <laughs> I won't tell him that when I meet him finally in person next week. Because wow. Not, um, wow. Last plus year, um, Glenn and I have actually never been in the same room at the same time and actually met. I have when I was in New York and he used to be on the stage at the hotel show and other events. I yeah, was. Yeah him as a like you know an aunt as a participant you know way back and he knew nothing about who Suzanne was in the audience so I am really looking forward to next week and I'll actually um be with both of them um on Saturday yep. so yeah yep. yep. <laughs> you know what I want to bring producer Danny and normally I don't give her a heads up but Hi. isn't that quite a story? We took yes. us over a year and a half to meet mm -hmm. in person even though I've known your uncle for nearly 25 years and mm -hmm. I've been to your home community several yep. times. So yeah, it's a crazy world. Yeah, it is. Well, and even mm -hmm. with Danny and, and actually even with David, like we've done a producer show. Um, but the three of us have, you know, never met in that level yeah. as well. So there, there's incredible. been really some awesome things about leveraging technology. And here's a classic example of what that is. Yeah, yep, exactly. Definitely. Well, Suzanne, we are out of time. I'm going to let producer Danny put herself back. She, thank you for joining us. It was an honor. shameless plug. How can people get a hold of you and find out more about your academy and your college, please? Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Suzanne Bagnera. I am at Indian River State College. You can email me at sbagnera at irsc.edu. My business is Hospitality Leadership Academy, and that's a mouthful, but you can reach me at hospitalityleadershipacademy at gmail.com, or you can find us um, on the web as well. So thank you for being here and listening. Thank you, Suzanne. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. You have got an open invitation anytime you want to come back. I, I know that No Vacancy is your home and they get the first <laughs> announcements, but make us number two and come back and visit us. I will be honored to do so. Thanks for having me, Craig. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, our audience, for joining us today. Isn't she wonderful? I love Suzanne. She's just a great human being. Our industry is full of them. Producer Danny and I are you know, bringing you the industry leaders that – are meaningful, that have something for you to help, do me a favor. Follow Suzanne on LinkedIn. Check out her college and her academy. You know, they're there to help you. And, you know, it's it's just an honor to have the guests that we've been having. It, it really is. And I'd like to thank our production partners. Okay, Red Roof Franchising. Need a new brand? Give them a call. Want to get your real estate transactions closed on time? A sale, a refinance, acquisition, whatever you're doing. Give our friends at Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group California a call. They work all across the nation. 
they also do a little bit of international work as well. So give our friends over at both groups a call. They'd love to hear from you. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. That means the world to us. And also, please, please follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe and smash that bell on YouTube. We've hit over a thousand subscri subscribe followers on YouTube. So we're really happy with that. We're actually getting close to 1,500. So join us there. Everything drops there first. And, you know, if you're a night owl like most of us, you can watch it at midnight. So when it goes live. So again, remember, be kind, share your knowledge. Now go be amazing.